talking to people in the ghetto, one dealer's name always came up when talking about crack's popularity. Freeway Ricky Ross became known as the Walmart of crack. Ricky's story has become as legendary as Tony Montana and Scarface, but with an even more bizarre twist. Ricky, who is currently serving time in the Texarkana Federal Prison, is scheduled for release in 2013. The prison denied me access with a camera, so I started interviewing Ricky over the prison payphone. You know, a lot of people don't know what it's like to, to, to come in, uh, uh, in the house and there's nothing to eat. You know, to go to a supermarket and, and, and walk through the store and, and eat out of the cookies and, and, and things of that nature just to have something to eat. Cocaine came along, you know, and gave me a new horizon, <laughs> I would say. There's a new epidemic, smokable cocaine otherwise known as crack. I remember clearly one day in the late 80s, every single news network simultaneously running an identical news alert about the new incredible, powerful, unbelievably cheap drug that was to sweep the nation. This is crack cocaine. Soon, every single black person living in the ghetto would sell his own mother for another hit of crack cocaine. It was like watching a strategically engineered ad campaign. Talk about perfect product placement. Did we mention it's cheap and strong and very addictive? Only $5 now, so stay away from it. Let there be no mistake. This stuff is poison. Crack cocaine epidemic. Crack, 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 crack cocaine epidemic. Few street level dealers have ever reached the legendary status of Freeway Rick with distribution that rivaled many Fortune 500 companies. Freeway Ricky Ross was a young, aggressive, savvy, streetwise marketer. Uh, who started selling cocaine, and then suddenly some major sources opened up for him. At the height of Rick's operation, he had over 40 full-time employees in Los Angeles alone. He had cook houses, cash counting houses, rock houses, decoy houses, and even a house he lived in. Cooking was always our most vulnerable and our most time-consuming uh, uh, thing to do. Usually you could put it in uh, like a big Samsonite suitcase. You could put 100 keys just about in one of those, or maybe two of them. So that's what, that's, that's what we normally cook every night, like 100 kilos. Rick shares some good down-home cooking tips about rocking it up. Well, the way we did it is I, I basically was a chef. You know, I, I did all the stirring. I would tell the guys who, to mix. Like one guy, he would be standing there, and I would tell him, add more baking soda, uh, pour more water, you know, that type of situation. So it was more, yeah, it was like an assembly line. I know this is nothing to joke about, but Rick is your all-American opportunist. And as the media told us, crack was now the big new opportunity. You know, we had houses where you basically would uh, go up to the window and, and it would be served right out the window, kind of like the way McDonald's does it, I guess. Because we had uh, houses in so many different locations. Basically, you know, I wanted a location. I wanted it to be convenient for the, for the people, you know, where they wouldn't have to drive for. It was kind of like marketing, I guess you would say. The gangs evolved, and the gangs were a great business venture. They're basically marketing tools. That's, that's really what they were. Uh, and they were quietly promoted behind the scenes. And you tell yourself, I'll just take $10 or $5 and buy me a little hit to sustain myself, to hold myself off. But after you get that little hit, you want more, and you want more, and you want more. Then that's called chasing the rock. Drugs can obviously cause horrible addictions. But the drug war creates black markets, creating an even more dangerous addiction for money. Well, I became addicted to the money and also the power too, I believe. You know, to be in charge and to have people look up to you and talk highly of you. Big names like Freeway, Rick, going down. People actually want to be like him because they, they don't think about drugs, they just think about the money. But what about those people whose lives are still affected by the Los Angeles crack epidemic? Someone that wants to get in a program, someone that wants to get away from this lifestyle, easily can do it. What I you know, what I easily can do it. I mean, if, 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 they can, if they can just overcome the addiction. Many people in Washington will tell you that the crack epidemic ended in the late 90s. But according to Sergeant Lou Daigle of the Los Angeles Police Department, crack sales are stronger than ever. Basically, every gangbanger comes down here to make money. Right. Okay, they come down from the inner city, they come down from East LA, come down from everywhere, all the different rival gangs, and very rarely actually is there a shooting uh, between gang members. Although Freeway Rick remains locked up, many people still blame him for Crack's easy availability. One time, 
uh, I went over to this lady's house to drop her off some drugs, and it was the look that the little boy had in his eyes, you know, as if, man, you're taking food out of our refrigerator. You know, we're not going to have anything to eat. And I thought about it, I said, man, I was putting him in the same position that I was running from. You know, I basically was running from poverty. That's basically how I got tied up in, in, in the drug business, because I never wanted to be a drug dealer, you know, when I was growing up. At one time, I even wanted to be a police officer or a firefighter. Back in the 80s, the big concern was not terrorism, it was communism. The Iran-Contra affair was one of the biggest political scandals in U.S. history. Members of the Reagan administration, headed by Oliver North, engaged in the sale of arms to Iran. The proceeds from these illegal deals were being used to fund the Contras, a right-wing guerrilla group that Reagan referred to as his freedom fighters. The Contras were fighting the Soviet-backed Sandinistas for the domination of Nicaragua. The Iran-Contra is very important in history. We have to remember the fact that Iran-Contra, its mandate was to investigate the sales of missiles to Iran. Former DEA agent Celerino Castillo not only fought in the international effort of the American drug war, he also had the rare opportunity of carrying a camera and recording some of the regrettable actions of the DEA and CIA while they supported President Reagan and Oliver North's Contra movement. George Bush Sr. came to Guatemala on January 13, 1986. And he approached me and asked me what I did uh, there at the uh, U.S. Embassy, what my job description was. And I told him I was a DEA agent working uh, uh, international narcotics investigations. And I told him, look, you know, we have gathered intelligence that the contracts are involving drug trafficking down in El Salvador. And then he just smiled, shook my hand, and, and walked away from me. And it was then and there that I knew that my government knew that these atrocities were occurring. They were so concerned about giving the guns to Iran and all that stuff. The question should have been asked about all that cocaine flying back over here. In 1986, on American TV, we were all being fed a steady diet of... We're taking down the surrender flag that has flown over so many drug efforts. We're running up a battle flag. This scourge will stop. But regrettably, back in Central America and in the jungle. I remember down in Central America, we were refueling planes full of cocaine coming into the U.S. And uh, it was a CIA uh, operation being run by the White House. At the same time, all of the cocaine from Nicaragua was flowing into the U.S. Freeway Ricky Ross was at his heyday. The average week would at least be two to three million dollars almost guaranteed. Some days we would have two and three million dollar days. After Freeway Rick was arrested, an investigative journalist by the name of Gary Webb uncovered a link that connected him back to the Nicaraguan Contra movement. So I read Dark Alliance. I got a, a, a copy uh, personally from Gary Webb himself. And to read the book, it, it, was, it was fascinating for me, you know, to find out that I was connected with the CIA and, and all these high-powered people up in the government. Ricky Ross was just lucky. He just happened to get a source who was connected to the CIA. For a long time in South Central, the buzzword was that the CIA was selling crack. I said, no, the CIA wasn't selling crack. The CIA was importing cocaine. Ricky Ross got it, turned it into crack, and he sold it. According to Gary Webb's Dark Alliance, when Danilo Blandone was displaced from his home country of Nicaragua, he set off to America to raise money to aid the Contras in ridding his home from the invading Sandinistas. When Ricky Ross was introduced to Blandone, Blandone was in a position to create a pipeline of cocaine that he in turn gave to Ricky Ross on consignment. Which I like the sound of that, you know, because I was always trying to get to the top anyway. Suddenly, some major sources opened up for him. Danilo Blandone, Norwin Meneses, both of whom were tied to the CIA and the Contras, and Gary Webb did a masterful job of uh, breaking those stories and proving with documents that that was the case. Whatever we were running in LA, it goes, the profit is, it was going to the Contra Revolution. I started doing a little research on my own and I read a little bit about Oliver North and the Contras because I never knew what the Contras was before. There's ledgers of, uh, of Oliver North and them actually transporting the cocaine to our country. There's film, every piece of document that's possible. Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. First time dealer and former Crip, Leroy Chico Brown was arrested with Rick. 
Chico walked into a DEA sting operation that was set up to capture and imprison Rick and trade for Rick's old partner, Danilo Blandone. How could this be possible? And then we read through the documents and then that's when Gary Webb started explaining it to us and we was like, everything came together now. One of the most paramount moments perhaps caused by Gary Webb's Dark Alliance took place in November of 1996. It was a monumental historic event. I mean, the director of the Central Intelligence Agency was coming to Watts to face the people. Now, we all know that the U.S. government and the CIA supported the Contras in their efforts to overthrow the Sandinista government in Nicaragua in the middle 80s. Now, it is alleged that the CIA also helped the Contras raise money for arms by introducing crack cocaine into California. Deutsch felt he had to do something to try to uh, deal with the outrage that was foaming all over the country at the time. And of course, it just blew up in his face. CIA fights drugs. CIA does not encourage drugs. Well, I mean, it was, it was actually one of the most monumental blunders of all time, uh, if you think about it. We have no evidence of a conspiracy by the CIA to engage in encouraging drug traffickers in Nicaragua or elsewhere in Latin America. Deutsch was there because of the Gary Webb stories. The Gary Webb stories had sparked a national furor. I would like to have Richie Ross's uh, brother to speak, please. The United States government turned their head and let this cocaine come into the United States of America allow Gary Webb to have full access. This whole thing is orchestrated. It was near pandemonium. It was about, I guess, 1,200 people in a standing room only in the auditorium, 2,000 people outside listening on loudspeakers. And uh, it was very hard to keep control. I got called on finally, and I said to her very clearly, I was talking, looking right at Deutsch. I am a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, and I worked South Central Los Angeles, and I will tell you, Director Deutsch, and the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. Uh, I was able to name operations. Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. I have Watchtower documents heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. He stumbled and stammered and wrung his hands. If you have information about CIA illegal activity in drugs, you should immediately bring that information to wherever you want, but let me suggest three places. The Los Angeles Police Department. And of course, my response was, I started there 18 years ago, sir, and they tried to kill me. Now what do you want me to do? If this information turns up wrongdoing, we will bring the people to justice and make them accountable. The crowd started chanting, we told you, we told you, we told you. And it was a great moment of unity. And it was a healing moment for me, because I'd been out alone for 18 years and didn't really know that, that that kind of support was there for me either. The average person in South Central Los Angeles did not know anything uh, about really how the CIA worked. They had an intuitive sense. If you have a private network run by George Bush and Ali North, not the CIA, you won't find the records in the CIA. They're not there. They're in these private privatized intelligence agencies. Will you pursue that? Will you pursue Ali North and George Bush and the, ev the massive documentation? All these gentlemen, like this gentleman here, the co-defendant of Ricky Ross. They needed the money to finance the war in Nicaragua. They had the link. We know that from records now that they send Landon, who was a CIA operative, CIA, to school for marketing. Marketing the product which we now know is cocaine. Me and Ricky Ross is waiting to get sentenced Tuesday. And she got, what, what, what a judge gonna say to us come Tuesday? Uh, may I just say that the uh, question which was asked of us by the judge was, was Ricky Ross ever a agent or a contract employee? I already knew that from the beginning of, of, of dealing with Danilo Blandon that he was sending supplies and things of that nature, computers and guns to Nicaragua to fight a war. Ricky had already served a five and a half year sentence for dealing crack, but was now given a second 20 year sentence after being set up by his former partner Blandone, while Oliver North walked away as a hero, 
wealthy and free to try his hand at politics. Oliver North was uh, being promoted by the Christian Coalition. And to them, he was the last white hope that uh, they were going to have for a right-wing um, Christian to run for U.S. Senate in Virginia. During the 1986 Kerry Commission, Oliver North's crimes were exposed to the American public. And yet today, Oliver North is not only a free man, he has his own show on the Fox News Network. It's amazing that uh, Oliver North has his own TV show, and, and hopefully when I get out, I plan on having my own. How does a federal agency like the CIA exert control over local law enforcement agencies? The way it's done, uh, which I saw firsthand at LAPD, there are networks called the Narcotics Intelligence Network, or now it's called Clearinghouse, where agencies who are doing a drug case don't step on each other's toes. Every time the police go invade us, I know Rick used to get calls and say, um, move out, you know, they coming. We actually saw that here in 1986 uh, with major task force investigations of Freeway Ricky Ross. They had search warrants for 19 locations that were prepared one night, and by the time they got there the next morning, all 16 locations had been cleared out. Uh, and that means that obviously there was a leak. And that's the way the CIA protects its share of the drug trade. Uh, just one night, uh, I got a tip from Danilo not to go over, and uh, just so happened to be the night that they raided. The United States Sentencing Guidelines and the federal sentencing system uh, rewards those who get others involved in criminal conduct, and that's what Blandone did. During the exact same period that Freeway Ricky Ross was at his heyday, home values in South Central Los Angeles were tanking. People owed $100,000 on their home. The place was a war zone, dead bodies in the backyard, prostitutes in the front, drive-by shooting. I mean, it was horrible and people walked on their mortgages because they couldn't sell the houses. Uh, and tens of thousands of homes were moved, literally for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar after people abandoned their mortgages. We call that ethnic cleansing. There was a greater plan to, to, to put churches, to put liquor stores, gun shops, uh, and, 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 and cocaine, drugs, into the ghetto, into the neighborhoods, and drive the prices down. And they pretty much did a good job of that. Real estate in, in California, which we consider Compton, Watts, East LA, South Central, where the drug infested gang killing the highest rates in the country. And families really start moving out of the inner cities to way out. I'm talking about 70 miles out of LA to get rid of. I'm talking about the farm land where they're promising people that they're going to build up sit jobs and everything especially like in, 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 in the 80s. There's a big thing about moving to Marino Valley. We're gonna have all these big corporations come in. It never happened. People actually moved out there, end up losing everything because the big corporations never came. And then a lot of investors came back here and start buying property for so cheap, cheap prices. And now the property value is sky high. You can't even afford to live in Compton and Washington World without spending $300,000 for a home that my mother then paid $9,000 for. I think the prevailing view on Wall Street is anyone stupid enough to buy drugs deserves to die. Uh, and if you can make money from them while they're doing it, that's great. And if that's imposing a crime wave on a community away from Wall Street, that's okay. There's no drug crime on Wall Street. I don't like it. Uh, they're, they're, they pay cash, right? They pay cash. One of the important facets of the discussion should be what I call conspiracy theories. There are lots of folks out there, and there are books written on this by people who are in a position to know, former DEA agents, former CIA operatives, things like that. And they tell stories about huge amounts of money, large-scale corruption in the big parts of government, et cetera. And are these stories true? And the answer is, of course, I don't know. I don't have access to any particular information more than anyone else does. However, ask yourself this question. If you're going to have a million dollars in cash, how much corruption can you buy at any level for that million dollars? And the answer has to be quite a bit. On December 10th, 2004, investigative journalist Gary Webb was found shot in his apartment. No! You lying! No. When? Saturday. 
Oh, man. The internet was set ablaze with conspiracies of a CIA assassination plot, but overwhelming evidence of a suicide soon put the theories to rest. Well, he used to tell me that, that, that he would come home at night and there'd be guys, you know, climbing up the pole and late at night, 12 and 1 o'clock, and, and, you know, at nighttime, and people following him around everywhere he goes. He has, he has cars telling him, and his phone was tapped. And he was just saying that they, they, they were, they were kind of like giving him the blues. You know, a lot of things were going on that, 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 that he didn't really like. And he said it was the government, too. By the way, the head of the DEA, his name is Rob Bonner, who's a friend of mine uh, throughout the first George Bush administration, said, documented that yes, the, the CIA was involved with importation of a fair amount of cocaine uh, with regard to the Iran-Contra, etc. But it just has to happen because of the money. Let me understand what you're saying. A ton of cocaine was smuggled into the United States of America. Well, they... In cooperation with the CIA? That's what... That's exactly what appears to have happened. When I was a clandestine case officer, I thought I was doing God's work, the nation's work, by recruiting traitors in, in varied countries around the world. And what I didn't realize was that I was literally there for show. I was just going through the motions because the traders weren't producing really useful information. Uh, we were ignoring all of the openly available information that would have produced much richer uh, results. Let's jump over to General Manuel Noriega in Panama. General Noriega was told by Bill Casey, then director of the Central Intelligence Agency, that he could have a free run with drugs into America, provided that he allowed us to support the Contras from Panama. That was a straight up deal. Now, I don't understand why the government didn't use Freeway Rick the way they used him. Set him up to go buy this from the big man and bust the big man. He ain't no, he ain't the big man. He's somebody's bringing it to him. Yeah, nobody's So why they man. didn't reverse it? They always it take you almost to... To make it seem like he's yeah, the man. They never but somebody's just bringing it to him. Who is the real drug lord? <laughs> you, what do you say to the conspiracy theorists? Like, I don't know if you're familiar with the book uh, called Dark Alliance, written about the CIA bringing in cocaine into South Central L.A., the whole Ricky, mm -hmm. Ricky Ross story. Well, you know, I've been working with the CIA for years. I take great pride in what they do. They're very disciplined uh, people of great courage. There aren't many of them. It's a very small agency. Uh, they're out there in the global context trying to um, protect the American people. So I think they deserve to be treated with respect. But the notion that, that they're smuggling drugs into America is just uh, absurd. I think Ricky Ross um, simply didn't invest enough money in bribing local authorities. Had he invested in a uh, protection insurance policy at the state and local level through legal fronts, I mean, there are all kinds of lawyers that are willing to sell their souls and happy to take their money and then channel it into bribes. So basically, I think Ricky Ross didn't realize uh, that he could become a pawn uh, in the war on drugs. Are you aware of whether or not narcotics proceeds at some time may or may not have supported Contra efforts? Yes, sir. Narcotics proceeds were used to shore up the uh, Contra effort. Okay. Did you personally play a role in some of the transfer of that money? Yes, I did. Six months after CIA Director John Deutsch came to Locke High School, the residents of Watts were hardly surprised that the CIA found itself innocent of all drug dealing charges. Today, Ricky Ross remains in prison as the sole perpetrator of America's biggest drug war scandal. And drugs were used, together with Saudi Arabian contributions, also off the books. Drugs were used by the CIA to carry out a covert action that had been forbidden by Congress. When Bush Sr. lost the election to Bill Clinton, everyone felt as if a new day were born in America. Now the peaceful liberals would rule and the tired, corrupt Iran-Contra Reagan crew would be gone for good. 
Problems today with President Clinton's book signing tour through the Southland. He appeared at SO1 Books in Baldwin Village. I'm all the way from Moreno Valley uh, just to see pre uh, President Clinton. I, I love him and I love what he stands for. But in actuality, he had this evil, evil, crazy, maniacal person that, were head that headed up the war on drugs. Now that's the good guy getting the bad guy to do the bad work. Yeah, they the scapegoat. The scapegoat. That's, That's what we were talking about the earlier. Scapegoat. The scapegoat. Like, we're the scapegoat. They all got to have an scapegoat. The media and the drug war have a long symbiotic relationship. During the last several years, Freeway Ricky Ross's legend continued to grow. A platinum selling rapper using the name Ricky Ross tells stories that glorify Rick's life as a drug dealer. Ricky even had his own hour long BET special once again proving how a war-weary country has become immune to complete government corruption. However, in late 2005, Ricky did catch a break and got a sentence reduced down to a few years. Ricky Ross is really a good guy who took advantage of an opportunity. He, he was an entrepreneur, but he's at the bottom of the food chain, so he went to jail. All the guys that violated the law, that ignored congressional sanctions on Iran-Contra, they're all in power. And George Bush, a guy who never succeeded at anything and is certainly not succeeding at this presidency, a guy who stole two elections, who has committed at least 10 different impeachable offenses, he's president of the United States.